created by Rio Grande. Los Angeles County Sheriff's Office calling all cars. Attention all cars to broadcast 251 regarding a holdup. Be on the lookout for a suspect described as male American, 6 feet 4 inches. Weight about 150 pounds. This man believed to be wounded in the holdup this day. That's all for Rose and Quist. Calling All Cars programs are not fairy tales, but the careful presentation of dramatic facts. We observe the same principle in telling the story of Rio Grande Crack gasoline. When you were told that Rio Grande Crack is the motor fuel of police car performance, it is supported by facts which no one can deny. Here are some of them. Rio Grande Crack powers more police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and other emergency equipment wherever it is sold than any other brand. And that's not all. In addition to a vast majority of your city and county officials, many heads of your California state and federal governments also prefer Rio Grande Crack to power their emergency automotive equipment. And the reason for this overwhelming endorsement by those who drive the most and thus know the most about gasoline is that Rio Grande Crack has proved to be quicker starting, smoother in acceleration, with greater power and maximum speed giving the kind of mileage that saves the money of taxpayers like you and me. And so, if you're more interested in gasoline facts than in gasoline ferry stories, drop around at the red and white Rio Grande station in your neighborhood and get the most highly recommended gasoline in the West. The story we are to hear tonight is to be found in the confidential files of the office of the Sheriff of Los Angeles County. We have therefore asked Sheriff Eugene Biscalouz to open our program. The cases you hear on Calling All Cars are not all necessarily good detective stories. It's not essential that a true story such as these cases present contain all the elements of a detective thriller. Most criminals are stupid. They make blunders. Our deputy sheriffs, by common sense and hard work, take advantage of these blunders. There isn't a genius in the sheriff's office. Yet we have solved more than 99% of the cases coming under our jurisdiction. Ours is the job of proving to the criminal that crime is a losing game, and we do it. The secret of being a detective lies in being able to see the mistakes a criminal makes and in being able to take advantage of these facts. The first mistake any criminal ever makes is in committing his crime. We shall hear tonight how this one mistake led to a lot of grief for the men involved. Hot dog payday game. Yeah, a lot of good that's going to do you. The way you throw your door away, you won't have a cent by tomorrow night. <laughs> Don't worry about me, Mr. Morgan Bilt. I don't see you driving to work in Rolls Royces. Yeah? Well, I'm not riding buses either, wise guy. You going to cash that check tonight? Yeah, and how? At Burke's? Sure. What's 15 cents in my young life? I don't mind paying a service charge. Well, come on, I'll drive you by. Guess I might as well cash my check tonight, too. <laughs> Hiya, Burke. Got any folding money around this joint? I think I might find you a little. Okay, my man. There you are, all signed and endorsed. <laughs> you get a raise? Yep, making 35 bucks a week now. That's fine. I like to see you young fellas get ahead. You'll be getting married pretty soon, won't you? <laughs> that guy? Oh, who'd marry him? Well, you never can tell. Now, there you are, Joe. Thirty-four eighty-five for you and 15 cents for me. Thanks, John. Yours 35 too, Bill? Yep, here it is. Say, how's the missus, Bill? Oh, she's fine. I saw her going by yesterday, but she didn't stop. And say, that's a fine youngster you got, Bill. You want to take good care of him. Well, don't worry. I will. You'd think that was the only kid in California, the way Bill raves about him? Well, you can't understand that, Joe. Not yet. Wait till you have one of your own. Yeah, <laughs> wait. <laughs> well, goodbye, boys. I'll see you next Friday. So long, John. Bye, Burke. Bye. <laughs> Hey, 
Is that clock right, Mary? Yes, sir. It's 7 o'clock, Mr. Burt. Would you like another cup of coffee? No, thanks. No, I think I've had enough. <laughs> Got to start cutting down past 50, you know, and I have to watch the old blood pressure now. <laughs> oh, I guess you do with that. Uh, That'll be 26 cents all 26. together. 26 uh, cents. Well, there you are, Mary. Thank you. Be back for lunch, Mr. Burke? Maybe so. I don't know how busy I'll be yet. May I have you bring my lunch over? Oh, be glad to. Bye. Bye, Mary. I better clean this place up a little. Good morning. Can I help you? Maybe. You cash checks here? I certainly do. That's my business. Well, I got one I want cashed. Come right back here to the office, then. Yeah. It's a nice place you got here. Yeah. Always keep this iron door locked? Yeah, most of the time. Keep right on going or I'll blast you. Hey, what is this? Never mind closing that door. Sit down. Everything okay, Fred? Yeah, come on in. Al's waiting in the car. He's getting nervous. Well, tell him to keep his shirt on. No, no, come on in. Help me. I said sit down, Mug. Hey, take it easy, young fella. Button your lip. What's the combination of that safe? I don't know. Don't feed me that gas. I'm telling you the truth. I don't know the combination. Well, maybe this rod will make you remember. Anyway, the safe has a time lock on it. You couldn't get it open for another 30 minutes. Okay. We'll wait. Gag him, Frank. Okay. Better leave his hands free so he can turn that dial for us. You can do it yourself. And leave fingerprints all over the place. Don't try to be funny, guy. Gag him, Frank. Hey, you uh, got a clean hat, you mister? <laughs> Boy, does he look funny with that rag in his yeah, mouth. Yeah, I think it's a funny rag. Now open that seat. Maybe he's got the combination worked on somewhere. Yeah, it's an idea. How about it, monkey? like everybody in South Los Angeles is out here. Uh-huh. Well, they haven't had a good killing out here in years. There's Welsh from the Huntington Park Station. Yeah, I see Armstrong's with him, too. Hello, Welsh. What's all the excitement out here? Hello, Killian. How are you, Mahoney? Hi. You know Armstrong? Yeah, yeah hi. Sure. Two bodies, but which one's the bandit? The short guy. The other one's John Burke. He's a sort of banker around here. Cash his paychecks. Looks like the crook got it right through the heart. Yeah, we figured that Burke was sitting in this chair here. He must have fired over his shoulder, judging from the position of the bandit's body. You see, here's a bullet hole in Burke's right cheek. Hmm, evidently shot twice, though, because it's obvious that the shot in the top of the head is the one that killed him. That's right. That's why I figure he fired over his shoulder. The man he killed must have been to his left, and there must have been another fellow on the right. Well, there aren't any guns except this one that belonged to Burke. We found these three bullets. One, evidently, is the one that killed this hold-up man. This one we dug out of the wall over there. Must be the one that killed Burke. That's the way we figured it. Where'd the third one come from? We found it over there by that steel door. Hmm. Looks like it's got blood on it. And Burke must have hit the other bandit, too. And that's what we think. That bird there has only one bullet wound in him. Since this bullet's bloody, stands to reason that the other man is hit, too. Are we sure there was another man? Yeah, pretty sure. The fellow who was just going into the cafe next door when all the shooting started told us that he saw a tall man run out of Burke's office here and that the man limped badly. Tall man, huh? Yeah, this fellow said the guy must have been six feet or more. Did he have a gun, or did this fellow notice? Yeah, he had a gun in his hand. He piled into a car that was parked in front with another fellow at the wheel, and the car turned down the alley next door and beat it. You know, there's a bare possibility that this fellow here was a customer of Burke's. Sort of innocent bystander, huh? About that? No, not very likely. They found this roll of wire in his coat pocket and his rubber gloves and his heavy knife. Well, it looks like they were about to tie Burke up. That's the way it looks to us. Now, here's a pillow slip that we found in the other pocket of his overcoat. The name of the apartment it came from is stitched into the hem there. Hmm. Bavaria Apartments, 843 South Maple. Well, that ought to be a cinch to trace. Yeah. Well, we'll send this fellow in for a postmortem. Maybe his fingerprints will identify him. That's a good idea. We'll get Frank Gomper to run a ballistics test on these bullets and find out which one killed him. Meantime, I think we'd better take a look at the Bavaria apartments. Checking with the manager of the apartment house regarding the slain bandit, Killian and Mahoney received the information. No, no one like that lives here. 
Don Normal's door pillow slip. At the morgue, the dead man's fingerprints were taken and compared with files in the police department as well as in the sheriff's office. It was learned... These prints belong to Frank Eller, convicted of theft, California Motor Vehicle Code. Drunkenness, petty theft, address unknown. Armed with this information, Killian and Mahoney returned to the apartment house to continue their investigation. What do you want now? We want to know if you have a fellow living here, a very tall man, over six feet. Oh, yes. Tall man, he, he live here. Apartment 41. I show you. Right back here, priest. How long has this man lived here? Oh, not long. Week, ten days, maybe. What's his name? Hamilton, his name, he tell me. What's his first name? Oh, uh, Fred, I think it is. Fred Hamilton, huh? Here's the apartment, please. It's not locked. Hmm, empty. Yeah, but it speaks volumes, Paul. I'll say. Take a look at the blood on that bed. Oh, so here's one of my good towels. All soaked with blood. Here's a real fine, Will. Yeah? There's a pair of pants I found in the trash basket. Take a look at the length of these. I go back to office, priest. Well, unless I miss my guess, that's blood on those pants, too. Sure it is. And here's a bullet hole right below the waistband. Front and back. Huh. Bullet went right through him. Looks that way. Judging from the length of these pants, I'd say this bridge is six and a half feet tall at least. I'd just as soon have these as a picture of the guy. Uh-oh. Here's something. What'd you find? Iodine swabs and old bandages. Well, looks like Hamilton's the man we're looking for. Yeah. But where to look? That's another question. Well. Oh, here's another pair of pants. Yeah? Maybe these will turn up something. Yep. Take a look at this. What is it? Property dug from the General Hospital, dated December 25th, 1937. Well, that's just about a month ago. Patient number 83564, Ward 5200. Name Frank Ellers. See, that is something. Hey, wait a minute. There's something written on the back. Yeah, I see it. Fred, 843 South Maple Street, apartment 41. Frank here at 7 a.m. Well, that definitely puts a third man in the picture. Yeah, assuming that Fred is Hamilton and Frank is Ellers. The guy who left this note's probably the man who drove the car when Burke was killed. Well, one thing's certain. Hamilton will have to contact a doctor sooner or later. We better get this description to the hospitals and all the doctors. We better check with the general hospital about this Ellers guy, too. We'll phone him and tell him we're coming. to see the record on Frank Ellers, the man we phoned you about. Oh, well, surely. Here it is. Right here. Thank you. Patient suffering from bruises and contusions resulting from street fight condition intoxicated. Uh, we couldn't get an address on this patient. Uh, that is not a definite one. He gave uh, East First Street as his residence, but no number. Do you have a record of visitors this man might have had? No, we haven't any record of that. Well, look, just for luck, let's find out if you ever had a patient in here named Fred Hamilton. Oh, well, that may be a bit difficult. Uh, we have our records bound according to years, and they're arranged alphabetically. Uh, if you'd care to look at them, you may. We care to. Yeah. Uh, right in here, please. Uh, now you'll find all the records in these files right here. Just help yourself. Yeah, thanks. We will. Well, looks like we'll be here till spring. No, oh, it won't take so long. I don't know about that. Well, I can't find any Fred Hamiltons in 1936. I haven't found any in 1937, either. You couldn't use a Joe Hamilton, could you? No, I don't think so. No fair Hamilton's in that one. I'll try 1935. Well, hand me 1934. There's nothing in this one. Here you are. Boy, I'm glad we're not looking for John Smith. Ever try finding a guy named Johnson? No. Why? Most common name in the English language. Yeah? Well, there's no Fred Hamilton's in this book. Give me 32. Okay, I'll take 33. Hey, it's getting darker outside. Looks like rain. Yeah, that would be fine. Traipsing around in the rain looking for a six-and-a-half-foot murderer. It's bad enough looking for anything. Hey, wait a minute. Here's a Fred Hamilton. Admitted in 1932, arthritis. Worked at Noah Beery's Trout Club up in the High Sierras. You suppose it's too much to hope this is the guy we're after? I don't know. It's a lead, anyway. So I heard he was married. Yeah, well, luck couldn't hold out on that, though. He couldn't have been married here. Never can tell. We're not going to pass up any bet. Once more began the long siege of checking musty records. Back in the pages of the marriage license books, Killian and Mahoney scanned every line looking for the name of Fred Hamilton. 
At last, in 1928, the record showed that Hamilton had married Edna Ender. As a final point of search, Killian and Mahoney chose the city directories. In the directory for 1937 appeared the name of Edna Enders and her address. Hey, I'm getting awfully fed up with ringing doorbells. Oh, it might be worse. How? You might be selling brushes. Oh, yeah, or magazines. I wonder if this dame's home. Yes. Oh, uh, are you Mrs. Fred Hamilton? Well, uh, who are you? Sheriff's deputies, Bureau of Investigation. My name's Killian. Uh, we're trying to locate a Mrs. Fred Hamilton. Her name was Enders before she married Hamilton. Come on in, please. Thank you. Uh, this is Deputy Mahoney, my partner. How do you do? How are you, ma'am? I'm the person you're looking for. Oh. However, I'm not Mrs. Hamilton. Fred and I have been divorced for some time. That's why I took back my own name. Are you married now? Yes, I've been married several months. Well, then you don't know where Hamilton is now, hmm? No, I don't. May I ask why you're looking for him? We're pretty certain he killed a man. Oh. And you don't know where he is? No. If I did, I'd tell you. He's guilty. I hope you catch him, but I haven't seen him in months. Say, why don't you check with his mother and sister? They live here. I don't know where they do live, but his sister works downtown. I can give you the name of the firm and you can contact her. Yeah, we'd appreciate it if you would. Uh, you don't have any pictures of Hamilton lying around, do you? No, but I have some negatives of old snapshots. You can have those if you want them. <laughs> Say we do. Say, incidentally, Fred has two brothers in Texas. One's living at Alney and the other lives at uh, Abilene. Oh, you know their names? Well, I think Ed lives at Alney and Charlie lives in Abilene. Ed and Charlie. Well, we'll have the Texas officers keep a watch on the brothers' homes. Maybe Fred will show up there. Yeah. Oh, I almost forgot the negative. Here they are. Thank you. We'll take care of them and get them back to you. Oh, you can keep them for all I care. I'll throw them away. I don't care if I never see or hear from that man again. Dispatching telegrams to the police in the towns where Hamilton's brothers lived, Killian and Mahoney continued their investigation in Los Angeles. Next morning, Killian phoned Hamilton's sister... I hate to do this, but we've got to catch this monkey. The end justifies the means. That's the way I look at it. Hold it. This is Lydia Hamilton. Oh, uh, Miss Hamilton, I hate to bother you at work, but I just got in from Abilene, and your brother Charlie told me to get in touch with Fred, but <laughs> he didn't know where Fred was staying. You liar. Shut up. Well, that's fine. I uh, wonder if I might take a run out and talk with you. Well, I'm sure you could, but perhaps you better talk to Mother first and see when she's going to be home, and then perhaps you can come out to the house. I'm sure she'd like to hear about Charlie. Oh, that'd be fine. <laughs> Where can I get in touch with her? Well, she's working in a drugstore down on East 7th, near Los Angeles Street. You know where that is? Well, I, I think I can find it. <laughs> Until the world began. Well, you can get in touch with her, and then whatever she wants to do will be all right with me. All right, that's what I'll do. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, this thing's getting complicated. Now I've got to go down to light of Hamilton's mother. You fellas wait here in the car. <laughs> What'll it be today, young man? A uh, cup of coffee, please. Cream? Yes, cream, please. Uh, are you Mrs. Hamilton? Why, yes, I, I am. Well, uh, my name's Killian. Mm -hmm. I talked to your daughter over the phone a while ago. <laughs> she told me where I'd find you. But uh, why were you looking for me? <laughs> Maybe I'd better explain. You see, I just got in from Abilene. I knew your son, <laughs> Charlie. Oh, of course. Well, how is Charlie? Why, he's swell. Oh. He, uh, he wanted me to look you up when I got out here and uh, <laughs> say hello and all that sort of thing. Why, uh... <laughs> I get off at three. It's almost that time now. Uh, why don't you wait and go out to the house with me? I'd like to have you meet my, my other boy, Fred, and Lydia. Oh, is, uh, is Fred living with you now? Uh, why, yes. Uh, he's been staying with us uh, two or three days now. Well, uh, Of course, it's a small place, and we're sort of crowded. But Fred hasn't been feeling well, and, and I wanted to have him where I could keep an eye on him. Yes, some boys are a trial to mothers. <laughs> oh, Fred's a good boy. Never been in any trouble at all. Oh, he drinks a little now and then, but, but nothing serious. Well, no, I wouldn't think he would, having a mother like you. <laughs> oh, well, I've tried to do the best I knew how about it, children. Oh, Charlie's a fine boy, don't you think? Uh, oh, yes, yes. Charlie's a swell guy. And I want you to meet Lydia, too. She's a fine girl. 
Oh, oh, she's going to be married soon, though. Is that so? Uh Uh-huh, and I just don't know what I'll do. Liddy and Fred have always been my babies, sort of. And when she leaves, well, I'll just kind of be lost, I reckon. Well, but they're still Fred. (laughs) Oh, well, you know how boys are. Always running around a lot. Of course, Fred's old enough to know what he's doing, but... But I always thought if, if, if Fred and Edna hadn't split up, things might have been different. Edna's a fine girl. Yes, I know. Oh, uh, did you know Edna? Well, well that is, I, I've heard about her. Uh, yes. Well, she was a good wife to Fred, but, but he just couldn't seem to settle down. Uh, then he got to drinking and running around with Frank Ellers and, and another fella I didn't like. But I haven't heard him mention Frank since, since he's been home this time. Uh, maybe they sort of split up. I... Oh, I do hope so. Oh, yes, that'd be a good thing for Fred if he'd stay away from fellows like that. Well, I've got a lot of work to do before I get off. I want you to run out to the house and see us, though, real soon. Well, I'll do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, what's that address again? It's uh, 226 Oxford Street, apartment 8. That's right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I better write that down this time. Well, uh, we'd like to hear you come out tonight if you're not busy. Well, perhaps I will. I have an appointment later this afternoon, but I'll get out there before it's too late. Well, we'll be expecting you. I know Fred will be glad to see you. Well, you boys follow us. Well, I took you long enough. You see her? Sure. Got the address from her. Fred's been staying at her apartment for the past three days. Think she suspects anything? Not a chance. She wouldn't have given me the address if she had. She thinks I'm a friend of Charlie's. Gosh, I hated the light of that old lady. Well, Hamilton didn't hesitate to blow the top of Burke's head off. Yeah, I know. It's funny about mothers, how they love rats like that. That's what makes mothers so valuable. Well, here comes Wilson, his partner. Well, he worked with Armstrong. It's Armstrong's day off. Henry Williams is taking his place today. Uh, which place is it, Will? 226, right on the corner there. Apartment 8. Well, that ought to be on the ground floor. It is. Come on, let's get in there. Well, I hope Hamilton doesn't see us and decide to give us what Burke got. Well, you've got something worth thinking about there, son. You better be ready for him. We'll take care of our end of it. Hold it. Now, apartment 8 is right here on the corner. Look, Welch. Yeah. You and Williams plant yourselves under those windows outside, just in case. Okay. Paul and I'll take the door here. Right. Okay, kid. Let's go, Paul. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah? You park on that little landing there out of the way and be ready to let him have it if it gets tough. There's no use both of us get blasted. He won't get tough. Uh, you can't tell. I'll knock, and if anybody else is in there, I can pretend I'm the fuller brush man. There's nobody at home here. I hope, I hope, I hope. Try him again. I'm wearing out my knuckles on this door. Well, try the bell. I did. Not working as usual in these places. Well, knock again. Hold it. I hear somebody inside. Sound like a man? Can't tell you. Well, what do you want? Reach for the ceiling, Hamilton. Well, what is this? An arrest might be one name for it. You know what it is, Hamilton. Who are you, Muggs? Sheriff's deputies. Okay, Welch. You and Williams can come in. We got him. Hey, uh, now, 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 look, fellas. You've got me all wrong. I haven't done anything. Maybe not. Come on, you can stop scratching the plaster off the ceiling now. That's the gangliest bird I ever saw. Get those trousers off, Hamilton. What for? Never mind, just do as you're told. Mm. Uh, Now what? Where'd you get that bullet wound? Oh, that that ain't no bullet wound. It's... Yeah, we know. You don't have to tell us. It's where John Burke shot you just before you killed him. How about it, Hamilton? I don't know what you're talking about. Now, look, what makes you think we'd come in here like this with a lot of questions if we hadn't pretty definitely settled that you're the man we're after? Okay. I guess you got me. What do you want to know? That's better. Put your pants back on. All right. What doctor treated you? Nobody. I did it myself. What about your mother and sister? Are they in on this? They don't know nothing about it. I told them I was sick. Said I had flu. How'd you happen to pick on old man Burke for a holdup? Well, about four days before the caper, Frank, he's the guy that got bumped off, he introduced me to a guy named Roberts, Al Roberts. Al said he knew a place where we could get our hands on a lot of cash easy. They wanted me to go on a job with him, and I did. Why? Oh, I don't know. I was broke, out of a job, didn't have anything particular to do, so I went along. Al stole a car and 
picked Frank and me up downtown and drove us out to this place on Slauson. He said the old guy that ran the place would be coming out of the little cafe next door pretty soon, and sure enough, he did. What did you do then? Well, Al said Frank and me should follow him in and hold him up, and we did. Why did you kill him? We gagged him so he couldn't yell, but we didn't tie up his hand. He started shooting, and one shot hit me, so I shot back at him, but it didn't kill him. Then he shot Frank, so I just let him have it. Where'd you go then? Well, Al and me went to a place over on San Julian. And... What's wrong with your saps? Did you have to shoot up the whole neighborhood? Touch a trap. You told us this guy was a cinch. Yeah, he would have been if you birds in the midst of white living and was shaking all over. Why don't you learn to handle that? Oh, save it. Get working on them bullet holes. You would have to get plugged on this job. Oh, go easy, you thick thing. Get ah, down, Bill. Don't be so yellow. I ain't hurting you. Look like at the slug went clean through. Yeah. I'd have been a lot luckier if I'd have stayed out of that dump in the first place. Say, where's that pillow slip? What pillow slip? The one Frank had in his pocket to put the jack in. What? Well, still in his pocket, I guess. Why? What difference does it make? All the dim with it, saps. That pillow slip's got the name of yours and Frank's apartment on it. Uh, you're right. They'll trace it. Hey, hey, where are you going? I'm scrambling out of here. I ain't gonna take no rap for you, buds. I'm looking out for little Al. So long, Al, sucker. Al, come back here. Al! Hey, you gotta help me. Al, come back here. You gotta help me. You gotta help me. Lousy rat ran out on me and left me laying there. Someday I'll get my hands on that guy, and when I do, his own mother won't know. Oh, oh, hello, Mr. Killian. What? How do you do, Mrs. Hamilton? Uh, I see you found Freddie at home. Yes. (laughs) My, it looks like you've all gotten acquainted. Oh, yes, we have, Mrs. Hamilton. Oh, but you're not leaving, are you? Well, no. uh, Look, Mother, I'm going to run downtown with Killian and the boys for a little while. You won't mind, will you? Of course not, son. Haven't I always told you to be more careful who you go out with? Yes, Mother. You you won't let Fred drink too much tonight, will you, Mr. Killian? No, I don't think he'll drink too much tonight. Sometimes, friends, it is a crime not to do the things we should. So don't neglect your car. Remember Rio Grande Cracked the police car performance gasoline that is first in public service, and Real Dube, the newest and finest motor oil sold in the West. At your Rio Grande dealers tomorrow. From information furnished by Hamilton, his companion was captured in Seattle and returned to Los Angeles where he was tried with Hamilton on a charge of murder. Both men were convicted and sentenced to life imprisonment in San Quentin Prison. Another example of a crime that did not pay. County Sheriff's Office calling all cars. Attention all cars to cancellation of broadcast 251 regarding a holdup. Suspects in this case are now in custody. That's all. Rosie Wood. narrator, Barry Kroger, bidding you good night for Rio Grande.